In the last episode of Soap, Chester, Benson, Donahue, and the Major went to rescue Billy from where the Sunnies are keeping him and got caught. Bert, who the aliens caught and are keeping on their spaceship, met Saul, who the aliens have kept for 4,000 years. And Saul told Bert that once the aliens catch you, they keep you forever. Meanwhile, the fake Bert, who is really a little alien, is still living with Mary and keeping her busy. And Mrs. David told Jody he can keep his baby only if Alice keeps out of his life. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. This episode of Soap, where we left off, with our rescue team having been caught. We've been expecting you. Billy? Freeze! That's my son. What have you done to him, you slime? Oh, slime, that'll get you in tight with him. Real good. <laughs> Not so fast. Billy, can you hear me? Sure he can. He prefers not to respond. You dirty stink. Dirty and stinking. Now that's very good. Dirty and stinking. Shut up. Bernstein. <laughs> Benson. Major, not now. We can rush him. Rush him. He can't get us all. He can get enough of us. <laughs> uh, uh. Here's one you haven't heard. Stand your ground. A uh, guy, uh, guy walks in the doctor's office, says to the doc, Doc, I don't feel so good. The doc says, well, what you got to do is exercise. What you got to do, five miles a day, you jog, call me back in two weeks. So the guy jogs five miles a day, calls the doctor back in two weeks, says, Doc, I'm in Chicago. What do I do now? <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Uncle Ren, you're driving me crazy. Would you stop pacing? Stop chomping and I'll stop pacing. I can't help it. When I'm nervous, I eat. Eating is fine. Listening to it is annoying. <laughs> Mother, how can you just sit there like that? Like what, dear? Half of our family went off to find Billy, looking like the four tops. And you're not even nervous? Well, I'm praying, Eunice, and you're not supposed to pray nervous. It's insincere. And I want him to know that I'm sincere. See, I'm asking God not to hold anything I've ever done against my child. Mission accomplished! Oh, Billy! Billy! My Billy! Billy! Oh, Billy! Oh, Billy! Oh, Billy! My baby! Oh. Uh, excuse me, I don't seem to be able to breathe. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Billy, I'm so happy you're here. We were all so worried. I sent you a message by telepathy. Didn't you get it? Message? You sent me a message? Yeah, I kept saying over and over, Mom, don't worry. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, I heard you, Billy. Really? I also asked for lamb chops. Huh? <laughs> well, I guess we got cut off. <laughs> Benson, thank you. No problem. Chester, you saved our boy. Oh, I love you, Chester. I love you, Jess. Mm. <laughs> oh, George, I don't know how I can ever repay you. Well, just seeing Billy back where he belongs and that smile on your face is enough payment for me. <laughs> then again, you could dump fat boy and marry me. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, you are wonderful. I knew you could do it. Oh, it's nothing, really. You just take the skin like that. <laughs> What's the matter here? What is this, another physical here? Hmm. What? What's that? Hmm? 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 
What's the, what do you, hmm? Well, something's wrong, you found what? Well, it's, well, tell me, it's about well, my heart, what? My heart? Wait, wait a minute, are you a cardiologist? <laughs> Listen to me, I'm asking a little silver man if he's a cardiologist. Please. Please. This is our standard physical, not to worry. Again, no! <laughs> Capturing people like this. We are not butterflies. Look at this. This is what you do to a poison? The man just had a Denver omelet for breakfast. <laughs> Listen, let him go. It isn't fair. He's got a wife, a family. So, 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 you know better than that. Look what you do to people. Disrupt their lives. Break up their families. My poor wife. God only knows how she has taken my disappearance. So your wife died. Oh my God, man! 3,783 years ago. Bad news travels fast. <laughs> 3,783 years ago. Yet. I should be over it by now. I am so sorry, Saul. I am a widower? Yes. I've been a widower for 3,783 years, and all this time I thought I was being faithful. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, I am sorry that we cannot let you go. That would be impossible. But I hope you can be happy here. It may help you to know that here, we live forever. Oh, yeah, through a great selling point. Immortality on a spaceship. Who cares? <laughs> Listen, I've been thinking. I've decided to help you. Do what? Do what? Flick chickens. <laughs> to help you escape, you schmageddy. Escape? No, wait. So, so, listen, you can do this? Come on, I'll try. Oh, uh, where are we going? The beaming room. Maybe we can beam ourselves down. Come on in. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Moving out? No, I'm going to camp. <laughs> this isn't fair. Well, maybe next year you can go to camp, too. So you heard what Mrs. David and I were? Every word. Oh, come on, Jody, this is a New York apartment. If I can hear Mrs. Lowenstein feeding her fish in 3A, I can certainly hear what's going on in the next room. She's wrong, Alice. I mean, don't you see that? That's not the point. The point is that you gotta make a choice between your daughter and somebody else. Look, if it was reversed and I had to make that choice between my baby and my best friend, there'd be no contest. Well, maybe you can move out for a few days, a week, maybe. Yeah, and then when things cool off, you can move right back in. You can't take that chance. Alice, you're my best friend. And you're mine. And I'll never stop being your best friend. But right now, there's somebody in there that needs you a lot more than you and I could possibly need each other. Hmm? Where are you going to go? The Chugash National Forest. Where? It's in Alaska. I've always wanted to go to Alaska, and now, thanks to you, I can go. Why don't you move across the street? Oh, it's pretty in Alaska. Well, it's pretty here. They're repainting all the curbs. <laughs> it's time to go. Alaska. What are you going to do in Alaska? Log? It is something I always wanted to do. Log or go to Alaska? <laughs> and because of you, I can do it, Jody. Before I met you, I, I was afraid to live. And now I'm not anymore. Yes. Eggs are five dollars a dozen. Ah, but snow cones are two cents a piece. <laughs> it's chilly. I bought a sweater. I miss you. All right. <sighs> That's what people say, don't they? They say that and, uh, hey, let's have lunch sometime. Jody. There won't be a day that goes by that I don't think about you. You changed my life, pal. I love you. I'm never going to see you again. Come on, walk me out. Hey, come on. Ha, ha, ha!
sit down, Bert. <laughs> I'm not even straining. Oh, yeah, oh, come on. <laughs> hey, you're moving your elbow. I am not. You are too. I'm not. Hey, Bert, watch him, would you? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> See that? See, everybody always looks down on us little guys. Turns out we're strong Yeah. We? Yeah. Little people, Dad? Yes. Like? <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I was short. I was... <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hi, Bert. Oh. <laughs> she stops my heart every time. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi, Jess. Mary, what did you want to talk to me about? Nothing. But, Mary, you said on the phone you wanted Nothing. To... Oh, no. A recipe. Oh. I wanted a recipe. For what? Nothing. I decided not to cook it. Cook what? Nothing. We're not eating. <laughs> Mary. I'll be home. For lunch today. Uh, I won't. You won't? No. Oh. You busy for lunch? <laughs> well, then let's make it uh, an early dinner then, huh? Mm. Mm. See you at dinner. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> Chuck, if you're finished, I'd like to speak to Jessica alone. Oh, sure, Mary. Yeah. Hey, I'm not done yet. Well, come on, Bob. Look, if I eat too fast, I get gas. That's because you swallow air. <laughs> Chuck, get out. Hey, they're going to talk about sex, aren't they? That's what they're going to talk about. I mean, she does it all night, then talks about it all day. <laughs> That's one sick bra there! <laughs> Jessica, hmm? I think I'm having a nervous breakdown. Well, I know a lot about them. <laughs> Aunt Augusta used to have nervous breakdowns all the time. Now, what are your symptoms? Over the last few days, I've had this crazy feeling that Bert isn't Bert. Who is he? <laughs> I don't know. But he's not himself. Oh, Mary, that's not a nervous breakdown. That's perfectly normal. I mean, don't you think that sometimes Chester comes home and he's not himself? That's not what I'm talking about. I don't mean that he's a different man. I mean, he is another man. It's not Bert at all. Well, whoever he is, he's doing a remarkable imitation. <laughs> Looks like Bert, sounds like Bert, acts like Bert, but I think it isn't Bert. I see. And do you also laugh and cry a lot for no reason? No. No. Because the Aunt Augusta used to laugh and cry a lot for no reason. That's when we knew she was going. <laughs> Jessica, what if it's hereditary? What if I'm crazy like Aunt Augusta? I mean, obviously Bert has to be Bert. Oh, Jess, do you think I'm crazy? Well, yes, I think you're a little crazy. <laughs> but, Mary, you have been under a tremendous strain lately. You never sleep. Because Danny's missing, you're up worrying. Because Jody's always calling about the baby, you're up talking. And because Bert's hormones have gone completely out of whack. <laughs> I mean, you're up... Well, you're always up. <laughs> but, Mary... If you weren't a little crazy, you'd be really crazy. Then you think I'm fine? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jessie, what a relief. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now, what did you want to talk to me about? <laughs> Do you think they saw us? 
No, they're too busy polishing their heads. <laughs> well, here we are, the beaming room. What are you... Come here. Let's get out of here. What are you, crazy? Wait a second. Where are you going? So please, you don't know how to work this machine. There's a thousand buttons here. Bidey, bidey, bidey. <laughs> I've been here 4,000 years. What do you think I've been doing? Two, three thousand years ago, I finished all the magazines. I walked around. I observed. I know how to do this. You sure? Trust me. I will now hit the activating switch. <laughs> Light switch. Just testing. No, not just testing. You don't know what you're doing. You're just going to hit. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> What did I do? I think you just blew up Saturn. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Listen, we haven't got a lot of time. Get in the cylinder. Wait a minute. Are you sure you know what you're doing? I'm sure, I'm sure. I watched them do it eight, nine hundred years. You get in, I'll punch in the directions, and immediately you will be beamed on, and I will be right behind you. I, I know what it's have a delightful journey. <laughs> How do you like that? It's right. Where am I? Who is that? Ubi's Bert. Where are you? I don't know. <laughs> what do you see? What does it look like where you are? Black. Just black. You beam me to black. <laughs> You're probably someplace and it's nighttime. No, no, it's no place. I'm telling you, it's black. I'm in black. Get me out of here. I hate it. <laughs> all right, all right. Get back in the cylinder. I don't know which is was this or an English car. <laughs> Black? You beat me to black? A simple mistake. Hey, it could have been voice. I could have beamed you to the Lincoln Tunnel during the rush hour. Now get back in. No, no, no. I'm not going in. Listen, I, I, I said the delay, and I'm coming with you. Now, come on. Wait, what the fuck I got for a pilot, Mr. Magoo? Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Say goodbye to everyone but you. Mm. What are you doing? Oh, well, I'm practicing. I've had to do this ever since you've been gone. Here, here, Benson. Taste. Oh, no, 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 Miss Tate. I know I'm full. I, I had. Just I had. Sit. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> well. That's what the family's going to have to eat. You're not making this any easier, you know. Uh, Benson, please, sit down. Come on, sit down right here. I've got a surprise for you. What? A goodbye cake. <laughs> Did you make it? Well, of course. Do I have to eat it? <laughs> You're my best friend, Benson. And why are you trying to poison me? <laughs> You're my best friend, too, Mrs. Tate. That doesn't have to stop, huh? No. <laughs> well? Different. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. <laughs> um, you know... I didn't take that job at the governor's mansion because I'm unhappy here. Oh, Benson, I know that. 
I mean, my goodness, running the governor's mansion is a wonderful opportunity for you. And they need you. I mean, this side of the family has a minor snafu once in a while. But they have problems. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you understand. That always was the screwy side of the family, the Gatlins. <laughs> very screwy and very rich. You know my great-great-great-grandfather? He made a killing in haberdashery. He, he invented those tall hats at the Pilgrims' War. Oh, come. Don't do that, Mrs. Tate. No, I won't. Because if you do, I will. Oh, gosh, you mustn't. I'm not. <laughs> well, me neither. Oh, Benson. Were Bert and Saul able to beam themselves home? If not, could they at least beam themselves to a warm climate? Now that Alice is gone, will Mrs. David leave the baby with Jody? How long will Donahue live with the Tates? Will he pay rent? Will the Major's rescue team ever be called back to action? If not, will they at least be called to entertain at a bar mitzvah? Will Mary ever find out if the bird she thinks isn't Bert really isn't Bert? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of Soap. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience.